not so chose. Not at all. Yeah, he's just, he's been slowing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, uh, and he was like uh, giving the sign of pain. Got it. That clicked a little bit. Hmm? Oh, he gave you a headbutt. I just made a new online course called How to Massage Your Own Dog. Okay, so we have a great surprise today. We're gonna to work with Keech, who's a 15-year-old cat. And here's Sebastian and Ilona. And we'll get to see his little face. Let's see what he wants to do. Wow, he's a big guy too, right? Yes, he is a big guy. Hi, Keech. What a beautiful cat. Hi, Keech. I just want to talk to you for a minute. Now, Keech has two different color eyes. I don't know if you can see that. And he is absolutely beautiful. Hmm? All right, I'm going to give him a second to get used to me. Uh, he was a, a neighbor of ours, had a litter. Yes. And uh, we just got one of them. Yes, he is originally from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Because at that time we were having a small house in Pennsylvania. And uh, our neighbor, she had the, a female cat. Mm -hmm. uh, th that cat, she looks exactly like Kijos. And uh, he's supposed to be a girl. When we took him and we, when we brought him home, mm -hmm. after two years we discovered that... Uh, I'm sorry. It wasn't two years. No, no, no. Two days. Maybe. Two days. I'm sorry. <laughs> after two days we discovered that he's a boy. Yes, he yeah. was very nice and very cheeky guy. So. so what happened to him recently that made you want to possibly come see me? Yeah, he's just, he's been slowing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, he used to jump up on the countertop in our uh, bathroom so we could give him some water from the faucet. Mm -hmm. um, and then we noticed that a couple times he missed, missed the jump and fell off. Mm. And uh, after a little while, he just stopped jumping up entirely. So we started. And when was that that he stopped jumping? Mm, I would say the end of the summer. Okay, yes, so three, or, three, three or four months three, ago. Three or four months ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Does he have pain when you pet him? If you mm -hmm. come down his back? He is... Uh, mm. Not during petting, but you said you picked him up recently. Yes, and, uh, and he was like uh, giving the sign of pain. Mm -hmm. okay. Like two days ago, I noticed when he was walking on the stairs, yeah. he limped and he was like, it was like stopping him from going to the end of the stairs. Did you notice if one leg looked bad? Like in the back? Uh, like yes, I think he's left uh, front leg. Left front leg? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, you know, sometimes he'll like walk up the stairs and trip and kind of slip and fall. So we gotta look at the left front. So usually with jumping, or the um, apprehensive to jump mm -hmm. is rear end, mm -hmm. right? Because you jump off the mm -hmm. rear end, mm -hmm. the legs come up in front. Now you have to catch at the top and pull yourself mm -hmm. up, but they won't even attempt if the back legs are hurting, yeah, he, or the back hips or the lower back. He's very Definitely. apprehensive. So we're gonna jumping. have to do both. Yeah. We're gonna have to look at the front mm -hmm. and the back. And I don't know how we'll do this, but you, you guys got it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just asked before we started filming, but this is your mother, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have other siblings? No. Okay. Just me. Hi. 
How are you? I put some cat hoops on this. Oh, towel. good. <laughs> Very nice. That will help. May I work with you today, Keech? Okay, what do you think of that? So let's start. Is it okay if I work with him? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I always like to ask. If, if uh, you need our assist to hold him, yeah. of course. Let's see what happens. He's already let me into his space a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try to help you a little bit, okay? So because his legs are tucked under, I'm going to just do the central part first, and we'll go to the front left leg in a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. So... First, going to start up here at the atlas, which is the top bone. And what's interesting is the left side of the top bone is really tight. And I'm going to first rub this spot here. And this is the base of the occiput. You feel that little spot there? You're really tight there. So what I'm going to do is just hold it for a second and come down. And I'm stretching the atlas down and holding. And right there, I'm on the edge of the wing of the atlas, holding. Sometimes I can get this release without popping it, so it's kind of a trigger point release. And what's kind of cool is Keech is leaning into it, so he's helping me a little. Horses do that quite a bit. They have a sense that they like it, they lean in. If they have a sense they don't like it, they pull away. But he's, he's giving me like the pressure I need, the counter pressure, pushing into my finger. I'm going to flick this down and bring it around a little bit. Big breath in. Oh, almost. There it goes. One more time. Big breath in. Got it. You could feel that pull down. What do you think of that, Keech? Take a breath. Okay, I just adjusted your left atlas. Okay. Okay, that's what I did. I got your left atlas. Okay, that's gonna help. The reason that helps is because we have the we have muscles that go down and innervate into the top of the neck there, and they come down through the shoulder area and attach to the upper humerus or the upper arm bone. So now I'm going to trace it down here and feel the neck and looking for other tightness. Right here, there's one at the base of the neck at C6. So I'm going to just hold that for a minute. Do you feel that one? Okay, so we're going to get that one for you next. Right there. Crossing over here. Yeah. Coming down the neck. Now I'm up on the humerus. That's your upper arm bone. Okay, babe? See if you can give me that arm. Now I'm inside the arm now, so I'm inside the delt. And I'm actually in the pec region. Now the pec is important because it, it helps extend the arm, but it also helps to adduct. So think about it, when we squeeze our, we're doing a chest exercise, like a push up or a bench press, we're pushing the arm out and it also draws towards the midline. And it's a really important muscle for shoulder function or to assist, it's a, it's a secondary muscle to shoulder function. So now I'm inside the shoulder. So I'm in here now. Here, look at him. I'm right in here. So here's the pec. You feel that? You even have one today. Do you feel how tight that is on you? And then here, I'm in here too. So I'm working out the shoulder. And Keech is letting me work. What the? Whatever, right? Now I'm down a little lower now. So I'm now on the humerus. That's your upper arm bone, Keech. I know this is taking a little time, but I don't want to rush them. I mean, like, how many cats would let you even do this? Okay, and now here's the little scapula, the little shoulder blade. Now on quadrupeds, the shoulder blade is on the side of the body, 
On us, it's all the way flat on the back, right? Our scapula. Mm -hmm. But for them, it's because of the shape of their body, it's on the side. And you can feel it here. Feel this, um, this very soft. That's the shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. Now, for us, it would be up here. But for them, it's over here. Do you feel it? There's a big ridge there? Yeah. And that's called the spine of scapula, that ridge. And it's, it's the ridge of the shoulder blade. And I'm going to let massage that up and down. And here, shoot over. Can you see his little face on the camera? When he comes over and looks at me, he blinks. So I was blinking with him before. And I know people leave that comment, but that's an obvious way to relax and connect with the cat is just a soft blink. But he keeps looking over at me and blinking. So I'm kind of matching that energy. Here he goes, he'll blink again. He probably can't see me so well too, right? He's got, his eyes are a little older, right? A little less focus, but he knows I'm here. So let's see if we can get that little leg to come out. Would you give me this leg just for a minute? Okay. Yeah, so you might have to help me, Sebastian. So, cause I wanna finish this leg. So I'm going to bring this leg forward. Here, move those fingers because they're in the way. Hopefully he doesn't. There we go. Come on, forward a little more. Good. A little more. Bribe that forward. I'm going to do a little adjustment. He's got an anterior humerus. That's a percussive instrument that pushes the bone a millimeter. Okay, so that's good. We just did the front left. What do you think of that? The tail's starting to go a little bit. Okay, so let's check down the neck now. The cats have seven bones in the neck and 13 thoracics and seven lumbars. Humans have seven bones in the neck, 12, and five. Horses have seven, typically 18, and six. Giraffes have seven in the neck. Almost every animal has seven in the neck except a sloth and a manatee for a mammal. You were asking before what I can feel. I can mm -hmm. feel every little spinous. You can too. So the softer you go, the better. So just make a little cup like that with your hand, really soft, okay? and slide down and you stay in the middle. You did it, right? You felt every one. That's very sensitive, I know. So let's find which one set you off. So I watch the ears flicker. I see, I'm watching his rib cage for breathing changes. And when we get to out here, we start getting sensitive. I know people laugh in the comments when I say to breathe, but part of that's for me and part of it's for him too because he can sense, animals can sense when your blood pressure's up, they can sense when you're stressed out, they can sense your language, they can sense the tone of your voice. And my voice is very loud, sorry. And I'm down here now. Now these two bones, you can feel these really soft though. Right here, put one here, one little fingertip. Very soft. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the tuber sacralis. And I'll show you where that is on a dog's spine. Oh, I don't have one here, do I? Yeah, I do. So hold on to him for a second. So this is the dog spine. I don't have a cat skeleton, but that's the bone you just were touching. So it's the part of the pelvis. The pelvis has three main bones. It has the ilium, left and right, and the little sacrum in the middle. So this is a good landmark because it's a high point. Here, mm -hmm. touch this here, and touch this here. And you, there's one on the other side, so you find both, and you drop down to the middle and you have the sacrum. So let's find it on each, because that'll tell me where the sacrum is, and then one above it is the seventh lumbar. And that's where cats can also have problems as they age and become seniors. So here they are right here. Look how soft I'm touching, so touch soft, okay? Mm -hmm. Who's first? Right here. Yeah, and you can feel those two bones. Hmm. Oh, because I don't want him to leave. So you touch real soft, but let's don't lose his focus. 
and we're right up here, okay? But they're smaller. That's where you are, Alana. Okay. Okay. So it's okay. He can face that way now. And I'm going to find this spot now. Okay, baby. I know this is taking time, but if I rush it, he'll lose interest working with me. clicked a little bit. Okay, let's let him think about that for a minute. Hmm? Oh, he gave you a head butt. Okay, that's what I did. I just adjusted your sacrum. And then I uh, adjusted L7, the uh, lumbar, where you're stuck. So, is that okay? Yeah, just give me a little head butt. sleepy too. All right. Good guy. Really like him. Okay, that feels good. Okay, that feels really good. Your sacrum's in now. Let's feel that back hip. That's your hip. That's where your leg bone comes up into your hip socket. It's the back right. Let's cross over to the left. Okay, how about your back left hip? I'm rubbing out the muscles. I'm on the glute now. And here's your side here. Pelvis, do you feel that? sacral tuberous ligament, putting a little pressure from inferior to superior. And it takes a little bit so far. Okay, right. How does that feel? Do you like that? So you're a little tight on the right on this side. So it's you got a little bit of a diagonal. You have front left, back right. Yeah, it's the back right. So diagonal happens in quadrupeds quite a bit. We see that in horses, dogs, cats. Yeah, right there. Here, I want to see who wants to try this. So it's so soft. Go much softer than you guys did before, okay? So I'm only putting this much mm -hmm. pressure, okay? So put one hand on this side too. You see this, the right side's tighter, right in there. Don't push too hard, just the muscles. Right there is tight. Mm -hmm. And the comparable side is over here, look how soft that is. Do you see that's soft and mushy? Right here. Yeah, one more time. And then here's the tight side. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so that's his tight side. Okay, I need to release that a little bit. So. Hold the wire in the air, please. Mm -hmm. okay. No, 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 it's done already, I got it. Oh. Okay, so sorry about that, but I just had to get that spot for you. And so people wonder if that works. Well, that was pretty, you know, significant that he pushed his... So the spot that it was at was called sacral base and he was posterior on the right. So I think I got that pretty good for you. You wanna come around this way and let's see his face from straight on. So I think we're gonna end there for today. So what I did is I adjusted your left atlas, then I worked down to C5, crossed over with the medial side of your delt and your pec minor, then I, uh, did an anterior adjustment or anterior humerus adjustment where it adjusted from anterior back again. Came down the back, I found some stuff at L7, so base, and then we worked the muscles. And um, I worked around the top of the pelvis, especially the right acetabulum and femoral head. Okay? 
And I know that was a little intense for you at the end, but look, we're good now, right? All right. Thanks for coming. Everybody leave him a nice comment. How are you guys doing? Great. Was that fun to watch? Absolutely. Yeah. It was fantastic. You can see he's not scared of me. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the most shocking part, to be honest. What? what <laughs> exactly. Because so always in a... In he's not, a, not, a fan, not a fan of vets. <laughs> so when you take him to a vet, what happens? Well, he, he hisses and uh, kind of runs away to us. Mm -hmm. So we did fine together, didn't we? Even though I had to work on that tender spot. Oh, we did. All right, thank you, everybody.